This is the new Sony A7CR, and we do have a full review of this camera, so if you're interested in hearing just about this, go check it out. But I wanted to compare it to my Leica Q2 and the new Leica Q3, because even though this might seem like an apples to oranges review, these cameras appeal to the same audience. They're compact cameras that are good looking and fun to use, but they come at drastically different price points and they have some pretty big differences in features, but somehow they hit the same audience. So the reason that I chose the Q2 is because as a primary shooter, I use the Sony Alpha 1 to take my wildlife shots and my professional photos and I'm very happy with it. But when I go out taking photos with my family or just feeling in an artsy mood, I bring my Leica Q2 and I was drawn to it because first of all, it's simple. The dials are simple, they're manual. Look at, look at this lens. I mean, it looks like it could be a 50 year old lens. It's classic, the design is classic. It has the magnesium alloy build that's light but feels solid and not to mention Leica's legacy. So I got that fun, compact experience with incredible image quality. When I first started shooting with this, I knew it was the camera for me. And yet this Sony offers so many of the same things. It has the gorgeous design, it's fun to use, it's got great build quality, but there might be a reason that you would choose this camera over the Leica. So let's get into the specs so we can get that out of the way. The Leica Q2 is almost $6,000. And a lot of people use it as a second shooter or it's like, their milestone camera, they've always wanted a Leica, that's me. It has 47 megapixels, which I gravitated to because I need to be able to crop with this fixed lens. That's right, the 27 millimeter F1.7 lens doesn't come off. It's the only lens you shoot with, but you can crop in camera. It has a fixed display on the back, so there's no tilting or anything like that, but that's fine with me. And it even has 4K 60, so you could do video if you want to. It has one card slot and everything's pretty decent in it. The Q3 at about the same price did some pretty incredible updates. It's got 60 megapixels and a new sensor that's gonna give you better noise quality with your low light pictures. They have a faster card, more battery capacity, a flip screen. So if you wanted to upgrade to the Q3 for those things, that'd be a good reason. The Sony A7CR is also 60 megapixels like the Q3, but it's not a fixed lens camera. And that could really appeal to you because you might want more versatility at that price range. So this is actually a pretty large lens, but if I wanted to put a pancake lens on there, I could and I would have the same compatibility. It's also got 4K 60 video, it's got the flip screen, and if you're used to the Sony system, it's gonna be nice for you because even though it has these classic charming good looks and it's compact, It'll be a user interface that you're used to, and it's got kind of like this more high-tech, more options, more features thing going on within the menus. All in all, I don't think you can go wrong with either choice, but if you're wondering which one is right for you, I think it comes down to a few things. First of all, do you have $6,000 for a Leica? Uh, full disclosure, I didn't pay that. I had a friendship agreement where my friend sold it to me for $3,000 if I'll sell it back to him for the same price when I'm done. So that's a sweet deal I could not turn down. Um, other than the price, you'll have to think about a few other things. Do you want a fixed lens camera? And do you care about the legacy and the build? That's something that I was interested in. I love the Leica brand. I love that it's classically good looking. It'll always be in style. And I love the build quality. Not to mention, I like the experience of fewer choices. I shoot with the Alpha One. I get to use all of the top features that are available. There's something nice about just keeping things simple, including their user interface, which is really streamlined, simple, and nice. But, the Sony will appeal to you if you want to spend about half the price and still get great image quality and the compact experience. But if you're in the Sony system, that means you're going to have the lenses available already and you're used to the user interface, but they're both range finder. So you have the viewfinder on the side. Sony isn't usually known for being the fun camera, but they do have lenses available with the aperture ring. If you like that tactile experience like me, and they have some buttons on the top here that make it more fun. But if you look at the back, you can see it's a very button heavy, more modern design. Whereas the Leica has this very simple body, not a deep grip, if that's something that you like. You can add grips though. They have a lot of add-on features. I like that the back is simple. 
just a few buttons, it's flat, it's not distracting, and it's just simple to use. I'm always thinking about the pictures and not my settings, and that's where I wanna be when I'm using a camera like this. Here's how the specs of the Leica Q3 compared to the Sony A7CR with the Sigma 24 millimeter F2 lens attached. I chose the Sigma lens because the gorgeous design and handling most closely matches the Leica. However, with this combination, the Leica is about half a stop faster, giving you better low light performance and more background blur. The Leica is 64% more expensive than the Sony with the lens, but of course you could change lenses on the Sony, something the Leica can't do at all. They both shoot 60 megapixels and they have basically the same Sony sensor. However, the Sony can generate 240 megapixel images on a tripod using pixel shift but that's only useful in carefully controlled conditions and we only get good results in our studio environment. The Leica Q3 has a tilt screen, which many still shooters prefer, but you can't flip it around to see yourself and the Sony has a full flip screen. The Leica can shoot at a full 15 frames per second, but with a fixed 27 millimeter lens. You probably won't often be using it for sports. The Sony is limited to eight frames per second, but you could change the lens. They both shoot full width 4K 60 video, but the Leica can also do 8K video at 30 frames per second. However, both cameras have terrible rolling shutter, so you might get tilting or warping when filming action. The Leica's viewfinder is more than twice as sharp and overall looks much nicer than the low resolution Sony viewfinder. The Leica has a leaf shutter that can sync up to one two thousandth of a second, though that depends on your flash duration. With our strobe, we can't sync faster than one six fortieth of a second. The Sony is limited to a very slow one one sixtieth of a second, making it a challenge to use strobes in sunlight when shooting wide open. The Leica is about 15% lighter than the Sony combination, which I appreciate because I often have a strap around my neck. However, if you're willing to give up a stop of light, switching to the Sony 24mm f2.8G lens would make the Sony even lighter than the Leica. So what do you think, which would you choose if you had unlimited budget? Would you go with a Leica Q2 or Q3? Or are you super impressed with these new Sony A7 RCs? I think they're really cool and they're beautiful too. I'm excited to see Sony do more stuff like this. If you wanna see another comparison, let me know in the comments down below. And of course, subscribe, like, put on your notification bell so that I feel a desire to do more of this.